Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at the double angle formula rules so we can answer questions from exercise 7c. So how do we, what is a double angle formula rule first of all? Well it's the way that we will expand sine 2a, cos 2a and tan 2a in terms of just sine, cos and tan with a single angle in there. So just sine a, sine, sine a, cos a and tan a. So in this case here, the way that we can derive these formulas is by taking the formula from the formula booklet sine a plus b is equal to sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. And to make sure that we have two a's inside our bracket, what we're going to do is we're going to replace the b's with another a. So effectively now what we've got on the left hand side is sine a plus a, which is sine 2a. And this is equal to now sine a sine a cos a. So the B has now been replaced by an A. Then we've got cos A and we've got sine A again. Now you can see here that on the left hand side that will simplify to sine 2A and we see that the right hand side both of these expressions are equivalent so we get 2 sine A cos A. So this here is a formula to remember doesn't get given to you in the formula booklet. You can work it out but it may take a bit longer than just remembering it. And this can be uh, given in multiple different ways. You can half both sides. So if you've ever got something where you've got sine A times by cos A, you can rearrange this into a half sine 2A. You can um, do a four angle. So sine 4A is equal to sin 2 sine 2A cos 2A. So you're just doubling the angles inside um, your identity here. You can, um, you can times by 3 on the outside if you prefer, so 3 sine 2a equals 6 uh, sine a cos a. So you can, there are lots of different variations of this formula here, so you don't necessarily just have to take a, you can have a 2x inside there, you can have a, a 60 degrees inside there, so sine 60 here can be represented by 2 sine 30 cos 30. So there are multiple different ways in which you can use this formula. Now the cos a plus b one, a little bit more interesting actually, cos a, cos 2a, so we'll do exactly the same thing starting with the angle formula for cos a plus b, set b equal to a, and we get cos a plus a is equal to cos a cos a minus sine a sine a, so that's effectively just cos 2a is equal to cos squared a minus sine squared a. Okay, so very similar to the sine squared plus cos squared equals one identity. So in fact, what we can do now is we can rearrange this formula to look um, as if it's two different, um, two more different identities here by switching that out. Now if we switch out the cos squared a with one minus sine squared a, this formula turns into cos two a equals 1 minus 2 sine squared a. Alternatively, if we were to replace the sine squared a with a 1 minus cos squared a, this formula will turn into 2 cos squared a minus 1. So in fact here, you get three identities for the price of one um, trigonometric expression here. Cos 2a can equal cos squared minus sine squared, 1 minus 2 sine squared, and 2 cos squared minus 1. They're all the same formula. You can, you can get from one to the other pretty easily if you just remember that sine squared plus cos squared equals 1 and replace the cos squared with 1 minus sine squared or the sine squared with 1 minus cos squared. They're all effectively the same identity. But they can be written in just multiple different ways. Uh, tan a plus b, so what we'll do here is very similar, set b equal to a, so it's going to be tan a plus a equals tan a plus tan a over 1 minus tan a tan a. So in this case here it's going to be tan 2a equals 2 tan a one over 1 minus tan squared a. And again you can do all sorts of things with this, you can set a equal to certain angles, you can double both sides, you can do half angle rules, you can um, divide both sides by 2, so you can vary up this formula as much as you want, just as with the sine one and as with the cos one. 
Now let's go into answering some questions. So use the double angle formula to write the following expression as a trigonometric expression, as a single trigonometric expression. Now this here looks to me like it's the cos squared minus sine squared formula and that is equal to cos 2a. So in this case here, set a equal to 50 and in this case the right hand side appears as our, as our expression we want to simplify. So the answer here is just cos 100. So if you were ever asked to calculate cos squared 50 minus sine squared 50, just rearrange a little trig identity and you get cos 100. Let's do exactly the same thing for this one, but in radians mode. So 2 tan pi by 6 so over 1 minus tan squared pi by 6. Now this vaguely looks like the tan 2a formula. So what we'll do is we'll set a equal to pi by 6. And all of a sudden we've got now tan pi by 3 on the other side is our simplified trigonometric ratio. Okay, next one then. Using the double angle formula to write down a following expression as a single trigonometric ratio. Mm, a bit more difficult this one. Let's treat the divide by sec as divide by 1 minus cos, 1 over cos. Now when you divide by 1 over something, you get that something appear back on the top row. So now it's going to be a cos 70. And this vaguely looks like the sine 2 a1, but there's a 4 at the front, so what we'll have to do is we'll have to double both sides so that it does balance out. So in this case here, set A equal to 70, and yeah, double both sides, so it's now 4 at the front of the right hand side, so our single trigonometric ratio is 2 sine 140. Okay, another rearrange and um, combine. So in this case here, we're given that x equals 3 sine squared and y equals 3 minus 4 cos 2 theta. Eliminate theta and express y in terms of x. So write an expression for sine theta and cos 2 theta. So let's rearrange both. Sine theta can be written as um, sine theta equals x divided by 3. And cos 2 theta can be written as th y, so cos 2 theta equals 3 minus y all over 4. Now what would be quite handy is to have cos 2 theta in terms of sine. And one of the cos 2 theta rules does give you this. It's this one here. There are three for the price of one for cos 2a. This is one of them. And we're, it's particularly useful to use this one in this case here because we know that we can use sine theta as x over 3 to replace this sine squared a. So replace theta with a. Unless you can jump straight to here when you first write out this formula. And now what we're going to do here is we're going to replace cos 2 theta with 3 minus y over 4. And we're going to replace sine squared sine theta with x over 3. So that's going to be x over 3 squared. Now all that they're asking us to do is rearrange this identity for y in terms of x. So rearrange both sides, do a bit of subtracting, times by minus 1. And here we get y equals 8 x over 3 squared minus 1. Okay, it's finally going to be one of these ones where we have to work out something in, as an exact value. So let's work out sine 2x. Um, so in this case here, sine 2x is equal to 2 sine x cos x. And we already have cos x, so we will need to work out what sine x is. In this case here, the 4 has appeared on the hypotenuse on our right angle triangle here. So doing a bit of Pythagoras' theorem, and we're going to get square root of 7 on the other side. Ignore the negatives for now. So now we'll work out sine of x, opposite divided by hypotenuse, root 7 over 4. And we need to work out now whether it's going to be positive or negative. The sine graph is going to be... Um, the sine graph is going to be negative in between 180 to 360. Um, or more specifically, if cos is a positive value, then it must be in between 270 to 360 rather than 180 to 360. But even still, sine is going to be um, a negative value here. So sine x is actually equal to minus root 7 over 4. 
Okay, now that we know sine x, now that we know cos x, let's go ahead and actually try and now answer the question, which is work out the exact value of sine 2x. Sine 2x is equal to 2 sine x cos x, so just multiplying these two expressions together here, we get 2 times 3 over 4 times minus root 7 over 4, so sine 2x here is going to be minus 3 root 7 all over 8. So there we are, that's why we had to go through the long rigmarole of working out what sine x is, because um, that's the only way we can replace um, a sine x in this identity here. Let's do another one, final question before we have a go at one ourselves. Cos x equals 3 over 4, find the exact values of tan 2x. Now in this case here we need to know what tan x is to be able to use the double angle formula for tan. So let's go and put 3 over 4 on a triangle. 3 as the adjacent 4 on the hypotenuse, as that's how the cos um, trigonometric expression works. Work out the opposite side and that's root 7, we've already worked this out. We know that tan x is going to be opposite over adjacent, root 7 over 3. And now we just need to work out whether it's going to be negative or positive. We know that the cos graph is going to be positive, so that's going to be in between 270 to 360. And we know the tan graph is going to be negative during that period. So in this case here, tan x is minus root 7 over 3. Now the final thing for us to do is to work out the expansion of tan 2x and substitute in minus root 7 over 3. So let's go ahead and do that. And you can use your calculator to simplify this. Minus 3 root 7 will be your final answer in exact form. Okay, your turn to... Oh no, before that, I just want to identify that you do get these in the formula booklet, but... Um, but you do not get the double angle rules. Now what you can do is just replace that with an A, that with an A, and that with an A, and you've effectively kind of just got there your sine 2A formula. Same with the cos 1, just replace that with an A, that with an A, and that with an A, and all of a sudden you've now got your cos 2A formula. So yeah, you've got these, but you don't get the double angle ones. Okay, two questions for you to have a go at here then. Pause the video and try these two out. Okay, then let's have a go at the left-hand side one then. So using cos A plus B, show that uh, part A is true and part B is true. So let's start with cos A plus B, given that it says using cos a plus b is equal to cos a cos b minus sine a sine b. Now what we do is we set b equal to a, so in this case here we're now going to get cos 2a is equal to cos squared a minus sine squared a. Okay, we now need to prove that um, this is equal to 2 cos squared a minus 1. What we're going to do is we're going to replace sine squared a with 1 minus cos squared a from the, not from this rule here, but from cos squared plus sine squared equals 1. So in this case here we're going to get cos squared a minus, and then 1 minus cos squared a and that's going to give us 2 cos squared a, if you expand the brackets correctly, being very careful for your double negatives. <coughs> so we get this expression here. And we'll do exactly the same going back to this step here. So we're now going to replace into cos 2a equals, we're going to replace the cos squared with a 1 minus sine squared. So replacing this with 1 minus sine squared. So we're going to get 1 minus sine squared a minus another sine squared a. <clears throat> so we're going to get 1 minus 2 sine squared a. Now it's always handy to be able to do this and to be able to do it really quickly just on the side of a page doing an A-level question. Um, because if you do forget it, which one's the plus one, which one's the minus one, which one has a negative, can't quite remember, you're able to um, get it exactly from being able to manipulate the cos squared minus sine squared rule. 
Okay, let's have a go at the second question now. So show that sine a plus, uh, sorry, sine a plus cos a squared is equal to 1 plus sine 2a. Well, let's go ahead and expand the brackets. We're going to be moving on to similar things um, such as this question here in the next video. So um, it is going to get a little bit tougher than this later on. So in this case here we've got a squared bracket so what we'll do is we'll write out the bracket twice and expand the bracket because remember that when you are squaring a bracket you're timesing that bracket by itself. So in this case here we're going to get sine squared a plus sine a cos a plus cos a sine a plus cos squared. Now, in this case here, sine squared plus cos squared is 1, so it's going to be 1 plus, um, and then it's going to be 2 sine a cos a, because these two expressions here and here are identical. And now we just have to kind of just remember in our, from our heads that 2 sine a cos a is 1 plus sine 2a. Okay, so we... You do just kind of have to remember it, unfortunately. Uh, part B then, evaluate sine pi by 8 plus cos pi by 8 all squared. Well, we can kind of just use the result above. We can just plug in A as pi by 8. So in this case here, the answer is going to be 1 plus sine 2 times pi by 8. Now, what's 2 times pi by 8? That's pi by 4. So it's going to be 1 plus sine pi by 4, pi by 4 is a 45 degree angle, so that's 1 plus root 2 over 2, and that's the answer to this question then. Okay, so we're still just scratching the surface of these double angle rules, these uh, angle addition rules, so have a go at some of the questions here in exercise 7c, don't think that that's as hard as it will get, it's going to get more tough later on, um, don't you be worried about that. So. Uh, have some practice at this stage here. Make sure you're familiar with the double angle rules um, so that you're ready to be able to move on to harder questions later on. So it's better to get in some base level practice now rather than struggle later on. So have a particular go at those problem solving questions, those exam style questions, and ask your teacher for help if you need any. Thanks very much for watching.